Hey you all. Uh, I'm about to go and fill it and clean up that snapper that I got yesterday because Mrs. is going to do a catch and cook for us. She's making uh, a snapper sambal, which is Malaysian, I believe. Uh, El Primo. El Primo. Before we do that, I just thought I'd give everyone a quick rundown on knife sharpening. This is the way I do it, and I know that there's lots of modern technology these days for sharpening knives, grinders, all this kind of stuff. You know, single pull things that you uh, get it always being sharp in one go. Me, going by my age, I'm a bit of a traditionalist. I like to go uh, old school. I use a Japanese whetstone. And all you need for a Japanese whetstone, if you haven't used one before, and I'm by no means an expert on this, you know, um, there is quite an art to it. It's basically just a, a platform or a base, like so. It's got a little rubber footing on it, makes it non slip doesn't work. I've got a, a Japanese whetstone, it's double sided, so you've got you know a lot of grit on one side and a heavy one on this side. This is for your, like your main sharpening to bring the blade you know up to the desired sharpness and then you've got your sort of you know your real fine grit on this other side and that's for sort of you know, polishing it up. I hardly ever use that side. Now with the Japanese whetstones, as the name suggests, even though it's not spelt that way, uh, they need, they require water, they have to be wet. So first things first, I soak the stain, just in a plastic Tupperware bowl, what have you. Excuse that mess, by the way. My turn to clean up, you can tell how well that's going. So I just fill the bowl up with water, get the stain, simple, just soak it. Make sure you get you know, water on the side you're gonna use. I just put that face down the, the heavier side and give it about 30 minutes or so and let that really sort of soak through, um, permeate the stone, so it's nice and warm. All right guys, um, with the assistance of some trick photography, it's now 30 minutes later. Um, so we soaked this enough, I gave it a soak before anyway. Uh, you, you can tell actually, when you look at it, you've got a little dry patch there, I don't know whether that's gonna come up on the GoPro, any good or not, but you can see the water hasn't really all soaked, soaked all the way through. So. I mean, do this probably you would leave it for a year, full 30 minutes or so. Make sure you get that completely wet. Then I try to just dry under the footing. You can't help it, but this will get slippy, so this is not the best surface to do it on. Put my stone there. And then I also put a bit of water on the blade. And this is just an old cheapo $20 uh, knife from the good people at Motackle. Tackle. Um, but obviously, if you use a better quality knife, then you know, you'll get a much better uh, edge on it. And Technique's quite simple. I keep, every sort of couple of minutes, you know, just keep wetting your stone, make sure you keep that moisture in. And then it's a simple process of just putting pressure, I use three fingers, so I get sort of an even distribution of weight across the blade. And I'm doing one side first, obviously, about a 45 degree angle. So when the, when the blade point hits the stone, you know, that's 90 degrees, that's sort of flat, obviously. It's about 45, about halfway there. Um, and when I'm stroking up, I'm not putting much weight on the blade at all. So when I come back, that I actually apply the pressure and pull the blade back towards me. And then just sweep it up again, and then pressure on, pressure off, pressure on, pressure off. And just working the full length of the blade. I try to keep a rough count in my head, so you're going to get an even you know, point when you do the other side. Uh, so I sort of do three in the middle, or three in the tip, three in the middle, and three at the bottom end of the blade. Again, this is a crappy half tank blade, so I'm not working with good metal here at all. Um, and I go back up the top, so to the light, pressure there, and then pressure on, pull the blade back to so keep that 45 degree angle. Three. Right there. And then obviously you do that a few times. And then it's a simple matter, flip the blade. Again, the three fingers, careful. And then this time, it's pressure on as you're going up. Moving the blade along the length of the stone, so you're getting full of nice sharpening across the full length of the blade. And you usually go back up. You just sort of do three strokes, three, three strokes for each sort of a segment of the blade into you know, tip, middle, base. So three strokes on each, and then back up again. Just keeping a rough count in my head. You know, try and keep it wet, keep the stone wet, as I said before. So again, just so what, so what you're doing is you grind down one side like this like that and then the other side you're flipping it and you're doing the same going that way and that's why you know you put no pressure on when you go up pressure when you come back flip it 
pressure's going up that time. And then no pressure's going back. Just watch your fingers. It's a good way to lose them. And so on. I'm just making, making sure you keep that stone wet. So, like I said, the most faster ways to do it than with a, you know, a bargain basement. Um, bargain bin knife like this, you know, you wouldn't worry about going to this kind of length with a, with a wet stone. But if you want a bit old school, you know, refinement, there definitely is an art to this, one that I have not mastered, but um, I know that certainly can even bring up a, a shoddy blade like this into a, you know, a wicked filleting weapon. Um, obviously you devote a bit more time to it until you get to a point where you where you feel your blade's sharp enough. If you're a real stickler um, for for everything, you know, you can flip it over then and then this is really, as I said, this is a much finer grip side of the whetstone and that's really primarily for polishing. Same same technique, sort of pressure on, pressure off, but um, I usually use it a lot faster straight, to be honest. It's a filling knife. If it was a very expensive, you know, good knife, then I would go through the whole process. But I went for this. Um, and there you have it. Now I'm going to go and uh, grab that fish out that we got yesterday and we'll go down the backyard and get the, uh, the filters off and cube it up and then the missus is going to make a grand entrance and cook us a snap of sambal. So there you have the art of the Japanese whetstone. Right, uh, this is the part I always hate. Job of the wife beater. Um, this is the fish we got yesterday. I think my ice on uh, ice overnight. Uh, so nice and fresh, good to go. Perfect size for two people to snap a snapper Uh Problem with snapper. Well, this they don't really have a problem because they're great little fish. But um, they're you know, one third head almost. So by the time you clean them up, knock the fillets off, you know, for the sort of dimensions of the fish. The, uh, you know, the, end, the end product is, is kind of not, not so much like a mackerel where you get heaps of meat off a, off a fish, um, you know, uh, but this one is about perfect size for what we need for our sunbelt dish for the catch and cook. bore you guys to death with this part. How's this? You know you're in Australia when, I don't know when you can pick all this up, but I've just taken the fillets off this fish. I've just taken them upstairs and put them in the fridge. Literally been gone five, ten seconds. Look at the fly count. <laughs> I've just come back to the to the frame. Ridiculous. Ah, uh, summer. <laughs> Alright guys, that's a wrap for the snapper. Fillets are off, I'm going to go upstairs now and just cube it up. Um, and this is going to prepare the snapper sambar for you all, which like I said before is delicious. I was trying to remember whether she wanted anything else. I think she said chicken, I'm pretty sure. Alright, yep. What's that? Oh, no chicken, just fish only? Sure? Righto. Turns out to be your lucky day, mate. Fish only tonight. I'm not that lucky chook. <laughs> Red dog, why don't she want a dog? Dog? Dog and Sampa Samba? What do you reckon about that? Want some dog and Sampa Samba? Don't seem too motivated by that idea. Eh? It'll be tasty. Righto, we're doing our snapper sunbow now. Show me the rowdy neighbours we've got. Don't be making a bit of noise as we do this. Anyway, the lovely better half is going to make a Malaysian dish, snapper sunbow. It's called Javanese. Javanese. Righto, fuck and roll. So, this is the snapper that we got yesterday. And uh, just remember earlier, I knocked the fillets off. So I've just cubed it, deboned it. Make sure there's no bones in there, so it's just sort of, you know, one, two inch chunky pieces without no bones. And yes. what else we do? And so I've got here, um, ready? Um, everything in memory here. I got it from Aldi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, re the ingredients will be chicken, supposed to, but I, I'll make it with the snapper. Snapper, snapper. Okay. 
because this is a fishing show after all. Why she does that, I'll take care of the most important thing. This one? Nice. Maybe these work good. Snapper sunbow. So, fresh caught snapper, cube it up, take out the bones, chuck in the veggies that you like. We've chucked in some green stuff, some orange stuff, some onions. Get your secret sauce from Audi, huh? get a glamorous cook, put it all together, and that's what you come up with. Right. We're gonna do all this, guys.